Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, we are on, and uh, yep, countdown says right. we are on. So right. <laughs> we hope that you're out there uh, ready to receive um, the Word of God. And, and, you know, they're not interested in hearing what we have to say as far as our <laughs> opinions. But we really just want the truth. We want to hear the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit us. of God, the, the Word of God. And yes. so... Uh, we're here as Kingdom Ambassadors uh, live, and you know, not only does that mean we're alive because we are, <laughs> but we are live on online. Line. And so, uh, if you're out there, you probably see um, on rickkendall.org on the Kingdom Advance, or we call it the Destiny Group page, uh, you see a place there for your comments, your questions, or just to say hi. Let us know that you're there so that we can begin to see how big our class is for tonight. And um, and we will grow on yes. this. We, yeah. Right now, this is uh, we, we could actually upgrade mm -hmm. where you could actually chat and mm -hmm. do all kinds of stuff. And, uh, you mean there's chat? A, they're, they can chat now. Oh, they can? Yeah. Oh, online. <laughs> just by typing. So let us know that you're there. Uh, just kind of check in with us and uh, just type that you are there and say hi to us. And we'll uh, know that we're getting the class together so we can begin. We don't want anybody to miss out on anything because we've got a lot to share tonight. And this is coming to you free, mm -hmm. uh, but we do appreciate those that would like to help us That's to right. keep it going, and we yeah. would like to uh, improve mm -hmm. on what we have, mm -hmm. and um, it's always good to do that. You know, in fact, uh, again, if you're view this is on Ustream, mm -hmm. but if you're viewing on our rickkindle.org website uh, and click the Destiny group and you're in, then you see us there, of course, and right underneath us is... <laughs> the PayPal donate button right there uh, yeah. and for if you'd like to give by credit card if you desire to give an offering and uh, let us know that you appreciate what we're doing here yeah. so again we're we're uh, waiting just a little bit more of uh, the class to check in here uh, I also like to say that uh, there's those of you that have asked us for uh, classes in um, just uh, a, a lot of, you know, the studies that we have, mm -hmm. and you are in another side of the world, and mm -hmm. would you, you would like for us to come and mm -hmm. do all this, but see, what God has given us is uh, the next best thing. That's right. <laughs> so uh, you, you can be taking these classes mm -hmm. and uh, be a part of our mentorship. And it seems like there's one more thing. Uh, we covered, uh, yes, also <laughs> on the website. Um, you know, this is great for, for free. Yeah. This is very valuable stuff. And, uh, but we're interested in you and your purpose and, and God accomplishing in your life a, a greater dimension of who you are and why you are. So we're offering this online. It's an hour long. Uh, it's really like a, a college class. And, uh, once we get into this, you'll see what we mean. But, um, we want you to know also on the rickkindle.org uh, Destiny Group page, there are downloadable notes uh, that I'm going to be speaking on. And That's uh, his notes because yeah. I don't necessarily have She notes. hasn't got her notes yet. Mine is just very basic and very small. <laughs> but I'd love for you to download those notes. Uh, all you got to do is click the little notepad right underneath the chat page, and, uh, and you'll have notes and follow along with where we're going on the notepad on the and note page. invite people that you feel they are ready yeah. to understand the kingdom of god yeah because what we know that is out there is a lot of religion mm. and so we want to to, to differentiate and to to make that clear what That's the right. kingdom of God really is and how we ought to live our lives in the kingdom, being citizens of a kingdom, not members yeah. of a religion. Yeah. 
So we're collecting our class, and we want to get started because time is of the essence. Right. And so the first 15 minutes or so, uh, I've asked Liz to share some kingdom basics, uh, and then following what she shares for the next 45 minutes or so, then I'm going to share on some insights. And tonight, I'm going to be talking about um, kingdom wealth, the wealth mm -hmm. transfer. And what does that really mean? Because it's time, it's your season That's to awesome. begin to reap. Yes. <laughs> and so uh, we're going to be sharing that very soon. But we're going to go ahead and get started. And again, invite your friends, please. Uh, we shared on Facebook that we're online right now. So let's really get into this and we'll mm. try to catch the others up as they come in. All right. So we've been talking about Kingdom 101 which is the basics to know of the kingdom of God. And you are going to hear some of the things are a little bit different, maybe that you've heard them uh, before, but uh, it, it brings new insight in the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. as to what the kingdom of God is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I shared last time that God made everything. He created mm -hmm. everything that is in heaven and on earth. Yeah. So everything, by right of creation, he has the right to everything, belongs to him. Yeah. So he is the owner and sovereign owner of everything. That's right. Now, when he created man, which I don't believe he made a mistake. No. <laughs> right? Because he doesn't make mistakes. That's so right. even though man is not perfect now, he was perfect when God made him. Amen. When God made us or mankind, we were perfect. But he did want to give us a choice. Mm -hmm. And that's what he did with Adam. Amen. So Adam lost the Eden because he took ownership. Mm -hmm. God gave him dominion. And he also gave him a mandate, which was dominion. And the other mandate was to be fruitful. Yeah. To produce, to multiply, and not just multiply himself, mm -hmm. but multiply all that he had given him, mm -hmm. which is a very good reminder for us to do. When God gives us something, we ought to do something with it. Yeah. It's like the parable of the talents. we got to do something. He's always, God always has, has principles that throughout the whole Bible are the same. And when we look at the Word of God in the... In the concept of the kingdom of God as a government of God that he's put on this earth, everything makes sense. Yeah. The Bible makes sense. A lot of people say, well, you know, the Bible contradicts itself. Mm. It doesn't. No. It never does. So when we look at it in the right context as, as the kingdom of God being a government, and that's where it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. So, the, so, so um, Adam lost the Eden or the Eden atmosphere, or the heavenly atmosphere, that was here, mm -hmm. because it was an environment. Yeah. It was something that, you, you know, wasn't, was just brand new and fresh. Mm -hmm. And that's how God is. When we first recognize Jesus as our Lord and Savior, everything is fresh. Mm -hmm. Everything is new because we're new creations inside. That's right. So that's how Adam was in the Eden. So he made what, what Adam did in a, in a very short explanation. I, you know, I, I covered this. But Adam made an independent decision. Mm. See, God is sovereign. Mm -hmm. We are not. That's right. He gave us dominion. But he didn't give us sovereignty. Yeah. He didn't give that up. No, no. <laughs> he still hasn't. That's right. He didn't give that up to man. But he gave him dominion. So that means he wanted him to possess the earth, but not to own it. Yeah. And when Adam did, in his own choice, as men do today, for the most part, is man takes ownership. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That's and God the problem. doesn't want us to take ownership. Everything is his. We are his creation. So we belong to him. That's right. But he gave us a choice to choose him. Because he because he loved us. Yeah. But he wanted us to love him back. That's right. And that's why he created us to manifest his glory on the earth. So we see here that then 
um, Adam became independent from God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because God is sovereign and we're not, when God asks us to take dominion, which he has given to men, we can take dominion. In mm -hmm. other words, he asked Adam to be a steward, mm -hmm. to manage. See, he made us with this thing inside that wants to take the control. Mm -hmm. And that's great. He gave us that. You know, little kids always want to take control of their things. And, yeah. But not the control, the bad control. Yeah. But the control that we can manage, mm -hmm. that we can steward. But that doesn't make us necessarily the owners of everything. That's right. When we willingly, and that's when we come to the kingdom and realize that God is the owner of everything, mm -hmm. and we submit ourselves under his mighty hand, then things are so different. Because we can still take uh, possession. Mm -hmm. You know, God told the Israelites, I'll give you this land to possess it. Mm -hmm. And yes, we should possess the things that God gave us, rightly so. Mm -hmm. we, they are all, all of it. I mean, his kingdom is ours to possess. Mm -hmm. But we don't take ownership. No. In other words, we totally understand that we are dependent on him. Yes. And that he is the owner of everything. And we own, not, own nothing. That's right. We just possess it in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Take control of it and manage it. Stu it's stewardship. Yeah. of the earth yeah. so Adam went the other direction and he uh, became independent from God and there was a separation mm -hmm. so now Jesus brought us he came to reconcile us with God mm -hmm. so that we understand that 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 means submitted to God we can possess all things yeah isn't that wonderful yeah yeah. If we're submitted to God and we have the right motivation from God mm -hmm. then we can just gladly and with joy possess everything that God has given us. Amen. Which is he has Amen. given us the kingdom. Now, before you get into the meat of what I, I'm excited you shared with me already, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to remind people, please let us know that you're there. This is interactive. This is called yeah, mentoring. Uh, so say hi to us. Let us know that you're out there uh, viewing this. This is live. This is uh, something that I know God has put on our hearts to do. Yes. To invest our time. And it's very exciting. <laughs> into you. And so if you're looking at the Ustream uh, version of this, then I think somewhere over to your right-hand side there is uh, uh, a chat or a social stream box uh, that you can let us know that you're there. Uh, if you're looking at it on rickkindle.org and you've gone into the Destiny group uh Click that logo and you're in and watching us there. Then uh, there's also the social stream chat there. And some have, have said they want to donate. There's a donate button if you'd like to uh, invest an offering. This is free of charge, but we make that available to you. Plus, we have notes um, in the little notepad <laughs> just underneath on our website as well. So wherever you're viewing this from, let us know you're there. And uh, we would love to, we, and if you say, hey, don't tell anybody who I am, we'll keep you anonymous. <laughs> but I just wanted to, once again, let them know that that is available, available for because you. we want to hear your comments, your questions, or even if you just want to say, howdy. Yes. Back to Liz. Blessings. All right. So, so then we see that God gave Adam a law, and that was, do not touch mm -hmm. that tree. Do not eat of that tree. See, you can Adam have all the, the other ones. You can have everything else. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, <laughs> come on. That yeah. was an awesome thing. Yeah. But he, because he's sovereign and because he wanted him to, to show God his obedience mm -hmm. to him, mm -hmm. his dependence on him. When we depend on God, we believe his word. Mm -hmm. So the word to Adam was, the only thing, everything is yours. Everything is yours to eat of every tree that you want, mm -hmm. except for this one. Mm -hmm. And as you said last um, last Sunday, this was real estate. It was about mm -hmm. real estate. Yeah. So Adam took it upon himself to make his own decision yeah. and uh, and ate of that tree. But yeah. that was the law that God had given him. And then he gave him two mandates. And one was to take dominion 
of the earth. Mm -hmm. He was the only one here with with Eve. Mm -hmm. But to take the minion of of uh, the steward to a caretaker to subdue mm -hmm. the earth mm -hmm. in a good way, not like to dominate. You know, like uh, mm -hmm. some people are dominary. No, he was talking about something different, a stewardship, but also f the mandate of fruitfulness. Yeah. He wanted not just to take dominion, but to be fruitful and mm -hmm. to produce and to benefit and to make it make it better. What he had given him, he said, I give you this, but mm -hmm. you can make it better. Mm -hmm. You can actually live from it, multiply, duplicate, and bring forth. Mm -hmm. So that was a very special mandate. I'm going to dwell on this one for a minute, mm -hmm. and then the dominion maybe another day. Um, because the birthright is very important to God. Mm -hmm. And then throughout the Bible, we see that. We see that the birthright is important, that he, he gave his only begotten son. That's the birthright. Mm -hmm. Jesus was the first of many brethren mm -hmm. spiritually. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what he tells us in his word. And by birthright, Jesus is the first of many brethren mm -hmm. because God made him to be that for us. But see, he first, God's first creation was made, right? Mm -hmm. And the new creation is begotten. Mm -hmm. There is this a difference between being made and being begotten because one is physical mm -hmm. and one is spiritual. Mm -hmm. And yes, God breath breathed the breath the, <laughs> the, the, the life into Adam and he became a living soul. Mm -hmm. But until we are begotten of the spirit, mm -hmm. we don't become become a spirit. Mm -hmm. The spirit of God has to be born in us, mm -hmm. and that's being begotten. So uh, on John 1, 13, it says, who were begotten, because we are begotten, mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Like Mary was begotten of the Spirit, she, 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 she became pregnant mm -hmm. with the Spirit of God, with the Son of God, mm -hmm. besides being pregnant physically, because Jesus was man and God together. So now we are begotten of the Spirit. But with also physical right. Mm -hmm. So it says, who were begotten, mm -hmm. not of blood, not of the bloodline, mm -hmm. not of the will or the flesh of men, but of God. Mm -hmm. And that's how we're begotten. In a sense, Adam was the first son of God, but not the first begotten son of God. Mm -hmm. See, there's a difference. Yeah. And here is where what, what I what I want to bring you to. In First Corinthians four fifteen, it says, for though you have many leaders. You have very few, or, or the leaders are like uh, uh, child tenders mm -hmm. or babysitters sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully we can do more than that, though. That's right. Yeah. That, that's right. Yeah. But there's the true leaders mm -hmm. in, in Christ, yet not many fathers. Mm -hmm. Because fathers beget, right? Mm -hmm. And because, like Paul says, for in Christ I begot you mm -hmm. through the good tidings, many leaders but not many fathers who can present the gospel as the uncorruptible seed of the word. This is what we want to do. We do not want to to be just uh, make somebody a Christian. Mm -hmm. That's what religion is all about. Yeah. See, that's the difference between religion and the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. There are many Christians that mm -hmm. call themselves Christians, but they are made Christians by religion. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, they have a set of rules, or they got saved by fear, or by what the status quo says mm -hmm. um, on society about what a Christian is. And so, we need to be begotten of the Father mm -hmm. through His Spirit, not through the you know, manipulations of man. Mm -hmm. And that's what they are, yeah. really, basically. You know, I need yeah. to say this, too. What you're saying is so true, and I want to make sure people understand this. Jesus, I, I love uh, one of our grandbabies, maybe it was our, one of our kids, said, <laughs> said you know, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only forgotten son. <laughs> <laughs> and we had to say, no, it wasn't forgotten. It was his only begotten. begotten. Because only Jesus... What be after Adam's fall? Yeah, was 
the begotten of God, God directly by the Spirit. Yeah. So now we are begotten of God through the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And like, that's exactly yeah. that's exactly it. That Jesus was the only begotten Son mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Because he was begotten spiritually of the sea, uncorruptible sea. Mm -hmm. And that's how we become true Christians yeah. by being begotten of the Father mm -hmm. and Jesus being the first of many brethren. Yeah, first that fruits. means first fruits. Mm -hmm. He was the first of many mm -hmm. brethren and we follow. So Christians by religion can be made. Mm -hmm. But those of ours that are begotten by the Spirit of God are truly born mm -hmm. of the Spirit of God. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, the Bible says we're born of water in our physical birth, mm -hmm. but we're also born of the Spirit. Yeah. So I, I, I want to leave you with this scripture in Ephesians 2, 1. Because begotten, when you're begotten, you're quickened. Mm -hmm. And you know that a lot of people that are saved by being made Christians because of religion or because of the customs of men and traditions of men do not understand the principle of being spiritual. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the natural man does not understand the things of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. In Ephesians 2, 1, it says, And you have he quickened. Mm -hmm. So my question is, how many of us are preaching, how many of you are preaching the quickening mm -hmm. and being begotten of the Father or mm -hmm. preaching just religion. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure if you're listening to this, that you are begotten of the Father yeah. because you're beginning to understand what walking in the kingdom of God and in the Spirit really means. Yeah. We can say a lot of words, but until we actually experience that quickening. And you have it quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you were once according to the course of this world. Mm -hmm. Now you see, when we are begotten of the Father, we do not subscribe to the course of this world. No. You know, That's we right. hear a lot about where the world is going. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, that the world is going according to the prince of the power of the air. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's funny. That, not funny, but it's interesting that it says that because the airwaves, you know, most of the people that subscribe to airwaves like our society today, television, mm -hmm. uh, the Internet, so many things. We can use them for the glory of God, but mm -hmm. for the most part, the devil thinks he's got it. Yeah. So we do not subscribe to the things that are in the course of this world. Mm -hmm. We are in another, in a different realm. Mm -hmm. We're in the heavenly realm because we've been begotten of the Father. That's right. So therefore, let's don't walk according to the course of this world or subscribe to it, but as much as we can, tell people what being begotten of the Father really is. Amen. 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 Good stuff. My goodness. And she didn't even get into the dominion part. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but that is awesome, honey. And, and um, we, again, are so excited about presenting this live to you. And we're still, you know, trying to get all of our little ducks in a row when it comes to the technology of all of this. So I think one of our, our issues is tonight that the chat does not seem to be working as it should because I just said something and it didn't show up. But I see they're saying some things in there. Yeah, well, that was from the other time. Oh, okay. But uh, we want to also remind you, again, because this is new, that we are interactive because we're live. And we do want to hear from you. Let me see if this goes through. Um, because we know that sometimes, you know, we hear a teaching, um, and, uh, oh, yeah, okay, sometimes we, we hear a teaching and, um, we've got a lot of questions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or yeah. it causes us to say, wait a second, you know, I, I'd like to say something about that. And we're not afraid of that. We really want you to interact with us. So I know this is new. and uh, Is it working now? I, I think finally we've got it on. So okay. uh, in the time that's remaining. see what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or typing. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, 
and notice that the picture is a little clearer. So we're getting there. Yeah. We're getting we're getting there. But um, thank you, honey, so much for that teaching. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And you know, we might have to change it from Kingdom Basics to Kingdom Depth, <laughs> Deep Kingdom Deep, because that was deep stuff. Oh, that's awesome. Amen. Yeah. But I want to kind of continue on with this. And before I get into, and again, there's downloadable notes um, for you on the RickKindle.org website. Um, and they're free, so have at it. Um, but I want to just share with you before I get into my teaching, uh, and I probably should have done it even before what you were sharing, but I felt like it's important because, you know, you, you're on this with us, whether it's live or later on through the recording. You're, you're on with us because you're hungry. Yes. You know, it's not really about just seeing Liz and I. You're, you're hungry uh, for more understanding concerning the kingdom of God and your purpose. And so we seek to make sure that what we present to you is balanced. You know, there's a lot of a lot of things going around these days. That's why it's important that as you teach what I teach, mm -hmm. that, you know, you look it up yeah. yourself. Look it up yourself. You know, uh, make sure you're in the Word of God because check out everything we say because it's important that there be accuracy and clarity of understanding because as you get hungry, uh, you've got to be sure to avoid the the junk food. Well, sometimes I think people uh, pick, pick up a, a, a verse mm -hmm. without seeing the context mm -hmm. and yeah, the whole context. The Bible agrees with itself. Yeah. And it, but a lot of times, you know, I, I I've done it myself in the past when I pick up a scripture and you say I'm going to elaborate on this, but it's got to be in context of the whole Word of God. What does God say in other places? Mm -hmm. You know about that. So. Well, let's get started into this, and this is kind of a um, a prequel to what I want to share tonight. But if you have your sheet. Um, if you're watching live or through the recording because this is being recorded, um, you'll see at the top of your sheet that uh, I want to talk about wealth transfer tonight. But I think we need to start because these mentor classes are only as good as your understanding. So there's four basic principles in the study of God's word. And we refer to his word as his constitution. His word is the constitution of the kingdom. And when we study the constitution of God's word, we've got to, we know our heart desires to be accurate, but how can we make sure mm -hmm. that we are as accurate as possible? Because we're always learning. Yeah. You know, there's four things, and it's at the top of the sheet, but if you haven't got the sheet, you might want to write it down, that will help you in studying and receiving an accurate understanding of what God's Word is saying. Four levels. Number one is content. Always look for content. Of course, content is in the Word. But sometimes messages that you're hearing people share lack content. Not always, thank God. But look for content. What that means is how rich is it Mm. in the word that's already written. So there's content. The second thing is context. Because even if you have content, you've got to make sure that you understand it in context. What does that mean? That, in other words... You don't just pick one scripture out and say, I like this one. I think I'm just going to build my own philosophy or theology or the out, of, out of that Yeah, out of that one scripture. No, no, you've yeah. got to make sure the scripture, you understand it in context. If, may I say something mm -hmm. about that? Traditions of men that have nothing to do with God start that way. Yeah. By Picking something out and trying to manipulate it into something that you don't make a doctrine out of just that one thing. That's right. So we have to all be, be careful about it. Absolutely. So look for content and make sure that you understand the context 
of the content when you read God's constitution, his word. And how do you know that you've kept the content in context? The third level is complement. Hmm. Because the word never contradicts itself. No, exactly. People who think it contradicts itself, as Liz was saying, don't understand that they've only read bits and pieces rather than understanding the full um, counsel of the word. So content and context, making sure that comes together is by complement, meaning that you there will be a cross-referencing mm. of good. a lot of different scriptures that will bring a clearer understanding. Mm -hmm. So now you say, okay, what's the fourth one? And this is very important because content and context needs complement mm. to bring consistency. Mm -hmm. So the fourth one is consistency. Mm -hmm. um, when you begin to add up all four of those, mm -hmm. you'll see that the consistency of the word brings the clarity of yeah. the word. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And all four of these things equal something. All four of these things equal wisdom. Yeah, that's good. And a lot of people will read the Bible and get knowledge. But you got to go through the process to get wisdom. And that's the chief principle the thing. The process. That's what, knowledge is great. Mm -hmm. But processing that knowledge into our lives is wisdom. Absolutely. This and is so great. This, I love this. I felt we need, before we go into many more of these uh, Destiny Group online webinars, <laughs> that it helps to understand where we're coming from as far as at why and how we understand the kingdom of God. Can I add something to that? Absolutely. Just in, to, to, to the whole thing. It's that mm. know the author. Mm hmm I mean, that's God. <laughs> you know, the author of the word of God is God. And when we know his character, mm -hmm. it, it, they, they, there's really no room for, for, for false, you know, theologies. Yeah. Because when you know the author, and, and, the, and that comes from knowing him inside of us in his spirit, mm -hmm. but the character of God is throughout his whole word the same mm -hmm. so god is the same yesterday today and forever yeah. jesus is yeah so and the character of god is the character of jesus and the holy spirit yeah. so when we know the character of god or what he says he says who he is mm -hmm. what he says who he not what we say mm -hmm. or somebody out there what he says who he is and then cross-reference all this yeah. then there's really no room for error because yeah. then you are going right with the constitution amen right? amen so keep in mind content context, context. complement and, and consistency, consistency equals wisdom, wisdom because you'll have a clarity of what you're understanding let me just share this very quickly too without content there's distraction mm -hmm. And the enemy, you know, didn't come right out and lie to Adam. He twisted what mm -hmm. God said. So he was Adam was distracted from the original intent. Yeah. So without content, there's distraction. Without context, there's deception. Wow. Mm. Without context, there's deception. Without compliment... There's debate. And without consistency, there's division. Mm, that's very good. And all of those things equal up to religion. Mm, that's right. Distraction, deception, mm. debate, and division mm. is men's traditions or wow. their idea of what they think God is saying. That is awesome. So I wanted to share that with you um, because, again, if you have your sheet, and we, again, we want to welcome everyone who's out there. We haven't had any questions yet. We must be being so clear. <laughs> um, but welcome to this webinar. 
Um, it's never too late to invite friends to come on. We have a chat or a social stream because this is live. You can ask questions or make comments. But I guess people are just really listening tonight. Uh, but we welcome all of you on board. And we're doing this every first Thursday of each month. And it may become more frequent as people show a real hunger for it. So uh, we're taking time to invest uh, valuable inspiration and information because we believe in your destiny and your purpose that God has placed inside of you. So again, if you're watching on Ustream, I think there's a chat available somewhere. If you're watching on rickkendall.org in the Destiny Group webpage, uh, you can see there that there's notes you can download. Uh, if you want to give an offering, as some have said they'd like to, you can donate through PayPal. So enough with the housekeeping. Now I'd like to get into the meat with what we've got left in our time of what God has put on my heart for you tonight. And again, Liz will be looking and seeing if you have questions and uh, or comments because we're ready to get into some meat now. <laughs> it was awesome. Are you ready? I'm ready. We're going to talk about wealth transfer. And we got to start off by saying wealth is not money. Mm -hmm. True wealth can produce money, but money is the very least of the resources that will come because of wealth, true wealth. I want to share with you, for example, because, you know, the reason why I shared about the context, the content, compliment, so forth, understanding the word accurately is because conventional or traditional thinking blocks many people from kingdom mm. understanding, from kingdom economy, from the kingdom of God and what God means in his constitution and his word. Because we've been so conventional and follow the traditions of men so much mm -hmm. that we it blocks our full understanding of what God may be yes, truly sir. saying. So when we talk about wealth, it's going to automatically bring something up in your mind that may or may not be accurate. Let me give you a case in point. Proverbs 13 and 22. And you might want to open in your Bible there or write it down on your page. Proverbs 13, 22. It says, and I think many of us have heard this before. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Actually, that verse starts with a righteous man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. That's, That's how, interesting. how it starts. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. That he talks about a righteous man. Yeah. But then, after he talks about the righteous man, he says the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. And I've heard a lot of people talk about the wealth transfer. And they say the wealth transfer is coming to the church, uh, to God's people. And sometimes the way I've heard it by some is that, well, God is going to send us a wealthy, wicked person <laughs> who is going to give God's people money. Or somehow it's going to come to us from him, somehow. And we tend to think that the wealth transfer is outside of us coming to us. And God is going to... This is what people think. God is going to use a wealthy, wicked person because it says the wealth of the wicked mm -hmm. or the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So that wealth of that sinner man is coming to me and rightfully so. That's what we've heard the transfer is going to be. But let me give you an, another consideration here. Well, I was going to say that leaves us with going out there. Trying to look for the wicked people. And it, you know what it, it what it is? It's welfare. Oh. That's what the problem is. Since Adam's mm. fall, man has Good been looking point. for welfare because mm. he failed to recognize the wealth that was inside of him since Adam's fall. 
and man looked for it outside of him and and desired to take in order to have. Welfare has been going on for a long time then. Yeah. <laughs> it's not something... Or the people looking at the government or a wealthy person or, you know. So, you know, we tend to think uh, mm. in conventional terms and then we miss what God truly yes. is saying. So let me give you this way to possibly think about this. When he says the wealth of the sinner, we've got it, or the wealth of the wicked, because wicked simply means twisted. Mm. twisted. And, and Adam introduced sin and sinful man because we got twisted through sin. Mm -hmm. But the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Well, let's consider this. Maybe we were the ones that were wicked. Because mm -hmm. we were without our king, without Jesus. We were sinners in the sense that we sinned. <laughs> right. And we were wicked in the sense that we got twisted. So our wealth was laid up and locked up inside of us Pushed. with no way to get out. Mm. Maybe the wealth of the sinner is talking about who we used to be. Mm. And it was laid up deep down inside of us with no way to open the vault because mm. we got twisted we got corrupted but God always kept it there you know there's great treasure inside of you yes there's great wealth inside of you and I'm not talking about money I'm talking about other things we're going to get into if, if we have time tonight but the that wealth got trapped on the inside of you and it was laid up it didn't it didn't leave you it got it got laid up it was put in storage mm. <laughs> But it's been Until there all the time. you became righteous mm. through what Jesus did to redeem us, to, mm. to literally bring us back by us, not with money, but with his righteous blood, meaning his kinship. So the wealth of the wicked, or we were wicked, was trapped and laid up until we became the just. And now the vault has been open. <laughs> and, and you know what? I, I think sometimes even after we have come into the kingdom, we still can't see it because the enemy tries to blind us mm -hmm. to our own treasure yeah. that we have to offer. We keep thinking somebody's got to give it to us so I'll have it. And God says, no, you, you have, have, it, have it, but you need to open yes. it because then I'll send resources to yes. that. God, is, you know, you write this down on your page. God is the source. Mm. Everything else is a resource. Mm. So God in you, That's once good. you've been made That's alive, good. as Liz was talking about tonight, quickened by God, mm -hmm. then you became you saw reestablished to your original blueprint, and the vault opened. It and began you can to see open. the treasure. You yeah. can see what you have. Here's another thing. See, this is why we're That's talking good. about we've got to get over conventional thinking. Yeah. Because uh, when I say conventional thinking, I'm talking about a man doing what's right in his own eyes. He only got this through copy of a copy of a copy. That's religion. That's right. And yeah. it's so often so. Yeah. But here's another scripture that we misinterpret because of conventional thinking. Deuteronomy 8.18. Mm. Deuteronomy 8.18. 18 and again it's on your sheet uh, that you can get on the website it is God that gives power to get wealth hmm. for what purpose so I can have money no no that's not the purpose that's the result and the other things as well that come that's good but his purpose is that he may establish his covenant yes that's the purpose. Now, here's here's how one word taken out of the context of a content can totally mess up our understanding. Because when he says it's God that gives power to get wealth, people conventionally would say that means I can get it 
I, no. you got it. I can get it and take it, and, and now I got it. No. You ready for this? The Greek and the, the Greek and the Hebrew for get there. It's God that gives power or authority to get. The word get there is to release. Oh, wow. It is God that gives power to release wealth. Mm. That his covenant might be established. Hmm. That word get means to release or to activate. So we can yes. say it this way. It is God that gives power to activate wealth in you that you didn't even know you had. Yeah. Yeah. There's still treasure and wealth in me. I don't yeah. even know yet that I have. But as I grow, I'm beginning to understand it more and more. Isn't this good? I bet it's really good because... Because the technology of God, the technology, I know it's a, it's a modern world, I mean, the world's, you know, it's computers and things like that. But the technology of God and the technology he has put in us, we haven't even begun to, to really even scratch the surface mm -hmm. of what a great treasure that is. Yeah. That's how he made us. Here's the definition for wealth. And again, it's on your sheet that you can download. But... Write it down. Wealth is defined as well-being. Wealth is defined as to be endowed. Mm. Mm. Wealth is defined as ability. I love this. Wealth is defined as strength and might. Mm. From within. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. So, wealth gives us the ability to progress. Yes. And wealth is not wealth until it's transferred. Oh, boy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. Now, let me say this to you. I'm trying to give you time to let it sink yeah, in. It's really good. Because God's really, you know, God will say things that, the, that we won't even, the speakers don't say. God God says something to you. And, yes. And you've got to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> it's the spirit of the Lord that's, that's yeah. operated in us. Mm -hmm. that, that has that. But, you know, with the wealth is not wealth, that's why rich people... Are not always wealthy people because mm -hmm. they might have everything locked up depends on what you define as riches it, exactly mm -hmm. because today riches you know i'm rich you know i'm so rich well you can be but mm -hmm. that does that mean that you understand the wealth or is it all locked up because it hasn't been transferred that's exactly right, right. now well while we've got to understand the how can I say this? Uh, we've got to understand the function of wealth. And, and while wealth will supply today, and, but we tend to think, no, the focus is wealth is for today. But it can supply today, but the focus is it's dedicated to prophetic vision. Mm. So Future. In other words, that's why it's called provision. Mm, provision. It's pro mm. vision. It's pro yeah. to your vision. Um, you know. It's before. It goes yeah, it's before. not post vision. It's pro vision. And we're not doing something funny with the word that that's the actual yes. definition. Mm -hmm. So it's it's simply the pro given to your destiny, to your vision, yeah. the God ordained purpose inside of that's you. That's really good. So. We tend to sometimes just ask God for what we need today. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't need to worry about tomorrow because he says uh, he'll take care of tomorrow. Yeah. But we do need to focus today mm -hmm. on what, where God is leading us tomorrow. That's what God said, that he didn't want us worried today about you know, what are we going to get it tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Because he wanted us to focus on the good things that he has for us tomorrow with that provision. He's going to provide yeah. 
whatever we need tomorrow. That's why he didn't want us to worry. And just because that's really he definitely thinking about the past and what happened before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let me remind you again. We know you're all out there. We welcome you to this live webinar. And uh, we know that you're listening. And it could be that our, our little social streaming is not working tonight. Uh, because uh, I haven't even been seeing my thing show up very until later. Mm -hmm. But we know you're out there. Uh, we're doing it live because if you'd like to let us know you're there and just say hi or ask a question or comment, that's what it's there for, whether you're watching on the Ustream part of this or on our website, rickkindle.org. Um, we invite you to, uh, there on the social stream, the chat, just to say hello or let us know if you have a question, because this is a class. We don't have any praise team. We don't have any <laughs> piano. Uh, we I could can sing. sing a little song you could sing, and I could <laughs> sing. But we we believe you've come here prepared to receive, and we have prayed over this. So uh, let your friends know that this is on, and thank goodness it's being recorded, and many of you also view that way. Uh, so. Let us know that you're there. Uh, otherwise, we'll let you sit back and just view this because it's extremely quiet tonight. But we are on the airwaves and we're in the atmosphere. Amen. And we know this is being charged and God yes. has called us to do it. Yes. So we feel it's a great investment. And Remember so the prince of the power of the air, uh, we're taking over those airwaves. He's being knocked <laughs> off his perch. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So let's go a little bit further into this. Your true wealth is hidden to the world until God opens it for activation. Oh, yeah. And he does that for your protection. He does that also to protect his assignment in you. Yes. Now, you, you need to, I want to throw this in here as some wisdom for you. Be careful about sharing what God is telling you too soon. Hmm. Yeah. I tell people, you don't have to tell everything you know. There's a time. There's a season. Ouch. Because sometimes, sometimes there's a due season, a word spoken in due season, how good it is. Meaning, it was time for it to be released. That's very good. Because the devil has no idea of what's going on inside of you until you release it either out of time or it's released by God in time. And then he will make sure it's protected. So uh, this is why it says, uh, I should have wrote the scripture down, but keep your heart with all diligence. Because out of it flow the issues of life. And, and, and let me say what you just said about the devil has no idea what's going on in you. Mm -hmm. First of all, because he was in your creator. Yeah. The creator does. But he wants us to be wise into just releasing that word that he has. Mm -hmm. And another thing is it, it's because the, the enemy doesn't know what you're thinking unless you, he wants to put a lot of pictures in yeah. front of us, but but the, the minute that we, you know, speak it out, mm -hmm. then he knows what you're mm -hmm. believing in or not believing in. So we got to be very, very, you know, talk about those things that have virtue in Christ. Yeah. Well, in fact, you know, I want to say this again. Your true wealth is hidden. It's protected until time for release. Yeah. The vault opens mm. in God's time to release for uh, supply to your assignment and to, you know, and, and God always, and people say, yeah, but wait a minute, what about the times that the vault's closed? Well, God, it says in the scripture, in Ephesians, I believe it is, it says that he gives an earnest down payment. Yeah, oh yeah. Meaning even, yes. even the down payment uh, for us just to simply live on every day is phenomenal. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> but some people say that's really all the, no, 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 there's greater treasure. Yeah. But God has a time. He has a season. Well, when you think that God is the owner of everything in heaven and on our earth, mm -hmm. so there is plenty of, of a source, yeah. sources and resources yeah. that we can use. Well, now, uh, I want to say this to you, that it is God protects you mm. more than maybe you realize. We can't get into all this tonight. We've run out of time. But this is why he said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. He didn't mean 
toss it up to the sky. You know, he he didn't mean well one day in the sweet by and by I'll collect That's it all. He, right. What he meant was when he says lay up for yourself treasures, he means let it be kept in reserve in the heavenly realm. Yeah, it's in the heavenly realm. And with where access it at any where time. neither moth nor rust nor thieves mm -hmm. can get to it. They yeah. cannot get to it yeah. as long they as can. you realize that out out of your mouth. Oh yeah. You know. You can't get to you can get it yourself. You can't get to it yourself. <laughs> I wish we had time tonight to get into the second half of this. I guess we'll have to save it for next time or however God leads. But if you get the sheet, you download the sheet, you're allowed to look ahead. Uh, because it talks about revealing the hidden wealth of another economy. You know, it says in Matthew 13, 44, that the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. Treasure. You know, the field uh, is current conventional mindsets or world the systems. World. Mm -hmm. It's hidden because people can't see it. The treasure is not just a novelty, but it's a rare find. So hmm. this is why when you discover it, you're willing to let go of all the yeah. stuff that you thought was so, yes. so worthwhile. Mm -hmm. And you're willing to sell all of it and go and get that treasure. Yes. And again, I can't get into all of this tonight. But let, let me share this with you in closing. Uh, I'm going to take an advantage here a little bit of our time. But I think we're still doing good. It's important that you understand these terms so next time we come on you'll understand. A visionary, I believe you're all visionaries if you're watching this, is one who sees history before it happens. A true visionary that's got a vision God has given sees history before it happens. So when you have a vision from God, that's lined up with the content, context, complement, and consistency of his word. You're not seeing something that God just thought of, but he already called it done mm. before you were born. Yes. So it's <laughs> one who sees history before it happens. Yes. An entrepreneur, write this down, an entrepreneur is one who enters the prize first. It's an enterprise. He enters the prize first. He's an entree, meaning enter, yeah. penure the prize. So we are those that recognize we come in and we see things that others may not yeah. see that are valuable. But we prize what God has said before it even manifests. Yes. Awesome. So an entrepreneur enters the prize. An innovator, the last one is one who goes in and obeys, meaning like yeast in dough. An innovator goes into a territory, almost like a secret agent, mm. and begins to cultivate the ground where nobody thought it was valuable. And something obeys, it comes up. So it changes the paradigm to where now there is wealth revealed. You know, honey, when I was, uh, and we've got to close out here pretty soon, but when I was in Israel, mm -hmm. I was sitting uh, outside, and it was getting dark, and um, I was trying to pray because I, I had the, the honor of ministering in Tel Aviv mm -hmm. uh, when I was there. And I was praying and saying, God, what would you have me share with the people? And, and, uh, and then at about that time, just as... Uh, it was getting dark. Dusk had turned into just a little bit more dark. Nighttime. It looked like the lights and the colors from Tel Aviv and from the surrounding areas, they looked like diamonds pushing up through the ground. Yeah, you told me that. I don't remember. And I thought, wow, this is beautiful. Yeah. It, it looks like there's there's literally stuff pushing up from the ground, the, the gems and the diamonds and all of those things. And God said, that's what I want you to understand. Mm -hmm. I've not called you to come and dump a lot of information mm -hmm. 
on where you're at right now. But I want you to be like a spiritual archaeologist who digs treasure that's already there mm -hmm. out so it can be seen. That's awesome. And so we want you to know that the wealth inside of you is so powerful. It's got the devil very nervous about you. He is so afraid you're going to see it and give God glory for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we pray in Jesus' name right yes, now we do. that that wealth would be unlocked. Yes. Because, you know, there's a time for sowing and there's a time for yes. reaping. But according to Amos, the two have come together mm. through Christ Jesus. So right now that God would begin to open the treasure that's inside yes, of you. Yes, in Jesus' name. And it's not just for you. You can live off of it and love it, but it's for those that need yes. to know the kingdom yes. of God. Yes. So we thank God for you. Our time is up. We pray that you've enjoyed this. If you watch it, even by recording, let us know that you viewed it. And uh, we are just excited to be here. Yes. And Amen. sharing the kingdom of God. And sharing the kingdom earth. of God. So until next time, God bless you. And this is Rick and Liz signing God off. God bless you.